All right, joining me now is John Gower, who is a, a retired Rear Admiral from the British Navy, and he was also the former Assistant Chief of Defence Staff. Hi, John. Hello, Dana. Good to see you again. John, can you tell me the sinking of the, the Moskva, this Russian uh, flagship um, uh, craft in the Black Sea? First of all, just as somebody you know who has spent a lifetime in the Navy, how significant is this? How, how big a wow was this uh, in, in your community? Well, I think uh, it is, it, you do not go into a land war expecting to lose the flagship of your, uh, of your sea force um, on, on, the, uh, on, on the sea side of the battle. This is not a maritime battle. There has been no war between a direct war between the Russian fleet and any maritime elements of the Ukraine armed forces. And in fact, the deployment of the Moskva, which is quite an elderly ship, it's predominantly an, a, a ship against another ship. That's how it was designed. It has a limited um, shore bombardment ability with its gun on the, uh, on the bow. And, uh, and it is that gun which it used to uh, bombard Snake Island right at the beginning of the war. I think that the, uh, that the Russians did not expect in any way that their maritime forces would be engaged. And yet we have seen on at least three occasions um, probable engagements and sinkings or damaging of ships. And the most latest of these is the probable sinking by Ukrainian action of the Moskva. The Pentagon says there's evidence that the Ukrainians sunk it. The Ukrainians say that they fired two cruise missiles from the, the shoreline near Odessa. What's your opinion? Well, I must say first that I don't, as a retired naval officer, I have no access to any inside scoop or intelligence here. I speak here merely from my experience. And, uh, and I can bring up, if you like, some pictures that I've prepared, which might help uh, those listening um, to, uh, to, to understand what it is that I'm, that I'm sure. saying. Let's have a look at them. OK, so, so this is uh, Moskva. She's a big, impressive ship. But as I say, she, she was a new ship when I was quite a young officer. Um, so she's been around a bit. Um, we only have the images. So this clearly is an image. Um, taken some time ago. Uh, we only have the accounts uh, that the Russians have given, which is that she suffered an internal explosion uh, and fire, uh, or fire and then explosion, and then loss of the ship. And the Ukrainian version, which, as you say, is backed up by um, United States intelligence, uh, that there was a cruise missile attack from a shore-based um, anti-ship cruise missile battery um, near Odessa and some reports that a drone was also used probably as part of the targeting but also perhaps as part of the distraction of this ship whose primary role is not anti-air and so it is primarily an anti-surface uh, ship ship um, and it will not have a very significant anti-air capability. Does, that, does any of that make sense to you that they may have used a drone or two or three to distract this ship? Well, I think that uh, distraction wouldn't have been the primary objective. It might have might have occurred that way. Um, they certainly would have wanted to give the missile battery an accurate position of the uh, of the target ship because these cruise missiles, the uh, the Neptune, is a is a derivative of the Russian, um, again quite old but very capable um, Kayak missile, the Kh thirty five. And uh, and that is a missile that can launch against a position at the, in, in, the, in, in the sea mm -hmm. without any radar on. So it's very difficult to detect. And then when it gets close to the target, it, it illuminates its radar and then homes in on the target. And if you can present a, uh, a position by using drones or any other um, intelligence capability, then you end up by uh, by making it a more stealthy approach um, by the by the missile, if indeed that is what happened. Um, so this is what she looks side on. And I bring this merely to show the sort of bit that's above the waterline in grey and the bit that's below the waterline in red, which is significant um, when we look at the photographs that have become available, having been taken 
from what appears to be um, the Russian ships which went to her aid and perhaps the ships which took her under tow after the damage, whether by missile, probable, or by um, internal explosion, possible. Um, and, uh, and, and I'll come to one of those because this, this is where we can now start to look at, at, at perhaps what happened. Um, so these are the primary two photographs that have been made public. And the first thing I want to draw people's attention to is she has a lot of water inside her at the moment. Um, if you remember the previous photograph, she was standing very proud um, of, the, of the sea. In fact, some of the underwater, the boot topping, the brown bit was, was visible. And so what she's lost is what in naval term is called freeboard, that bit of the ship that is beloved above the waterline, uh, the, bit, the bit that keeps her afloat, of the air in the ship that keeps her afloat. And just for perspective, that waterline is nearly up to the break in the hull where the hull slightly bends. Oh, admittedly, she is heeling over towards the photographer. But if that was, you look at the previous photograph, that would be a, a rising of the water where I've marked it in blue from mm -hmm. what you can just see around where the white line is almost up to the uh, almost up to the, um, the, top of, the, the, top the of upper the deck level. So a, that is a significant yeah. amount of water in in the ship now that amount of water is very unlikely to have come simply from firefighting within the ship some of it might have done but the majority of that water has come in through a hole in the hull now that hole in the hull could have been caused by an internal explosion out or by an external attack um, in my judgment it is much more likely to have been by an external attack because if you have an explosion in a ship the vent path is usually up through hatches, through a funnel, not out through the hull, which is designed to withstand um, water pressure and other things. So, so it's more likely that something was punched into it from the outside. And, and the reason I say that is if you look at this photograph here, which is just a zoom in on the one we've looked at, this is the area of greatest damage. So if a missile attack, the missile hit here. These missiles sea skim. In their terminal phase, they go down to about three meters, about 10 feet off the water, and they hit generally on the side of the ship. And if you look carefully inside the red circle, you can see what appears to be a hole in the hull. It's a, it's a dark a mark on the hull. It is unlikely to have caught fire and just burnt that bit of the thing. So it looks like a hole in the hull. I'm speculating but she's tilted over in that direction. She's lost a lot of freeboard. The chances are that the water has come in from a hole on her port side. And the reason I think this is that my mind, I'm old enough to remember the Falklands War. And my mind goes back to the Exocet attack um, in early May of 1982 on HMS Sheffield. So I'm, this is what Moskva looked like after the incident in April of this year. This is Sheffield after the Exocet attack in May of 1982. And on both of them, the area of the ship that's the biggest cross section that a missile radar would look at, where the funnel is, where the command and control area is, where the main missile area is, um, it, it, you can see in the Sheffield that the, the hole from the Exocet missile is about there. Remember, this is a, a missile basically designed from a missile de designed to look like an Exocet. So, so they're very, very similar missiles. And if you look at the Moskva, there is again this hole that I purported to, that I believe to be on the port side, roughly where the largest radar mass of the ship would be to, to, a, to a missile approaching the ship. And I think these two photographs show um, a very similar story. And mm -hmm. You would, and the other thing about the Moskva, which is different from the Sheffield, is that around where the missiles struck, just forward of that, are all of the sandbox anti ship missiles. There's a considerable amount of um, ammunition and other explosive uh, issue and stuff around there, detonating munitions and all of that kind of stuff. Do, so, you, do you want to imagine what the first uh, panicked uh, 30 minutes or so were like on that ship after, if it was indeed a missile strike? 
Well, I think I'd, I would want to be lurid and imagine it. Uh, if you want to know, you can read the Board of Inquiry report into HMS Sheffield's loss. Um, it, it's a considerable... Uh, panic is never the right word with trained crews, but undoubtedly a massive shock. There will be initial loss of life, a huge fireball, and, uh, and then you set to try and save the ship. Um, and Sheffield was saved for a little longer than um, Moskva. She also sank under tow, but she was in the South Atlantic Ocean, not in the Black Sea. Those are two very different bodies of water. Let's, let's, lose, was... that, let's lose that picture, Jim, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So, they're, they're saying that the captain of the ship died in this, in this attack. It, it may be... I mean, he could have died in many different ways, fighting the, the fire, being there when the ship sunk. He may have died even in the first few seconds of this because that hit, according to the, the picture that we're looking at, or we were looking at in this just below or very close to the command and control, the, you call that the bridge? Well, the bridge is where you look out and drive the ship from uh, that, that in most modern warships, and I'm sure uh, Moscow is the same. There is an operations room, which is usually down below the bridge it's usually forward simply because it needs to be close to where the captain's cabin is where the bridge is um simply for the positioning of the key officers you you don't put the command and control center right aft because of the time taken to get there so much like sheffield the operations room in sheffield was very much where it hit um if that was the case and in the in most modern navies when there is a battle underway, the captain is actually in the operations room, not on the bridge. Um, a more junior officer simply steers the ship where the operations room wants it to go. Um, so um, again, it's speculation if he was in the ops room and that's where the missile hit, that may well be uh, where he died. Um, un you, unlikely for the captain to be actually fighting fires, that wouldn't be the primary role of the captain. His job in any circumstances to direct others uh, and maintain an overview but but sadly a number of the ship's company will have lost their lives um, in this I say sadly simply as a mariner um, uh, they are of course um, part of the arm of the country that initiated this war so the sadness is tinged hugely um, Notable that some of them are, are conscripts, according to the Soldiers' Mothers Committee, who said that they shouldn't have been involved in direct action. Uh, but, but anyway, that's, that's another issue. There, there were more than 500 sailors on there, and the Russians have not come clean on how many died. But in the awards ceremony, um, where, where they handed out medals to survivors, there was only about 100 in the photograph. Would you comment on that? I mean, the loss of life could be quite big. I mean, the entire ship sunk. The, the loss of life could be rather big. It, it's also, I saw a couple of photographs of that ceremony. There did not appear to be any wounded or injured um, individuals there. And, um, and I suspect, therefore, that uh, the difference between casualties and loss of life is, is, is a different one. Um, I, I suspect that, that, that if Sheffield's experience and other ships in the Falklands that we have lost, and indeed USS Cole, when she was attacked by uh, terrorists in uh, in in the Middle East, yeah, um, and, and a number of people, a, a larger proportion of people, tend to be injured either by fire or by explosion or by other other things. So, I, so I, you know, I wouldn't draw the conclusion if you only saw a hundred and there were five hundred on board that four hundred were killed because I think that would be unusual in a ship that didn't immediately sink and had time to bring. Um, and had time to bring uh, support vessels to her and clearly make an evacuation. Uh, it, it's clear from that photograph that while the, there is considerable damage um, in, in the photograph I showed in a particular section of the ship, the remainder of the ship appears to be relatively undamaged. Uh, so, I mean, I think there will definitely be deaths on board, but, but I, I think to say it's in the hundreds, I think that would be unusual.